Hi, we're the, the Mouse, Mouse Couple. Couple, and today we're going to talk about our trip to Marceline, Missouri. Yeah, a little bit of Disney, but not in the parks. Right, Disney outside Disney. Exactly. So let's get started. We visited the Walt Disney Hometown Museum in Marceline, and while you can't film inside the museum, we wanted to talk a little bit about what our experience was like. Yeah, and we did take some, we did take some pictures as well. Right, we'll so. include those. So what did you think of the museum, Robbie? Overall, I thought it was pretty cool. It was I, I thought it was very interesting to see where he grew up and the town in general and how Main Street in Marceline is actually what Walt used to design Main Street in the parks, which I thought was very cool. Right. The way the museum was set up, it went through the most part chronologically through his life, and then another section of the museum focused specifically on the Disney family. And if you're really into Disney history, I really love the room where it showed letters between Ruth and Walt. So that was a lot of that was really cool. That was a lot of really cool history, and it was just the letters they wrote to each other. Talked so about, like, her wedding and how he, he was sending her money and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It was, it was interesting. He was definitely supportive of his sister. He was very supportive. Right. And there was one room that was just, like, Disney memorabilia, which that, that was always yeah. cool. <laughs> that room was very fun, and it was kind of a hodgepodge of different things. Some... There was a big sign. Yeah, there was a giant Mickey and right. a, a train, a train conductor. Outfit. But Marceline also has a lot of railroad history, so that's another big pull for tourism for the town, not just Disney. But, of right. course, we were there for Disney! So they had the Midget Autopia car. Yeah. That was very cool to see. They had his desk. From his childhood. From his childhood. With, his, with his initials in it. Carved twice, not once, but twice. So you could tell that he kind of had a creative ornery streak right from the beginning, Walt did. Yeah. So. And then upstairs there was a film that we did not get to see actually, but no. it was a little long, it was an hour and a half, and we right. didn't plan on there being a film, so we didn't we have enough time. We also didn't know when the film was starting. That's also So true. that was another part of why we didn't end up watching the film. But that was upstairs. Upstairs there were also several models. Yeah, those were cool. That someone had contributed to the museum and they were very cool. And they also had history specific to Walt's mother. Right. Working on the farm. Right. And Walt's mother was famous for her butter. Apparently so. <laughs> so that was cute. And then they also talked about how Walt was trying to develop an attraction in Marceline, Missouri to help his hometown, but it never happened. Right. He was going to build this, like, a, a next park was going to be in Marceline. Right. And the Midget Autopia, I think, was kind of the... Yeah, so I think... The beginning of that. They told us that they took Autopia from... Disneyland right. and moved it to Marceline and like a, a miniature version of it for the folks of, Mar folks of Marceline to enjoy. Right. It's no longer open though, but... But you can still see the car in the museum. Yeah. They also were building when we were there over the summer, and that was summer of 2019, they were building a sort of walk-through track yeah. huh. next to the museum, and we weren't entirely clear on what it, it was it was strange it was just like a sidewalk but it was in the shape of what the track would have been right I'll throw a picture in here but yeah it was it was a little strange but it was cool that the town is still trying to honor that legacy and oh, everything yeah. and it was really evident that Marceline is very proud of Walt Disney and their connection to Walt Disney and that Walt was very proud of Marceline and that his time in Marceline had a big impact on him and the future of Disneyland and the Disney company. Yeah. So our next stop in town was we went to the Walt Disney Post Office. We were told that if you brought a piece of mail that you wanted to get canceled, they would cancel it for free. So you get the Walt Disney Post Office postmark. 
So we ended up buying a postcard from the muse from the museum for a dollar. We did not bring a piece of mail to cancel. We did not. We were not prepared. <laughs> and we just paid the one cent stamp at the right. post office, and it got the postcard canceled. So this is the postcard we got. Mm -hmm. And it, the picture shows Walt and Roy scan the headlines in front of Marceline Santa Fe Station, current home of the Walt Disney Hometown Museum. So there's the guys in front of the building. Oop, I'm crooked. And then we bought our penny stamp, and you can see the cancellation right here. But if you're looking for a very cool and inexpensive Disney souvenir, this is a great option. Yeah, for sure. So I'll try to zoom in so you guys can see the stamp, or the postmark. And it says where the dream began, and the little the little blob is supposed to be Ruth, and the bigger blob is supposed to be Walt. And they're in front of the dreaming tree. The dreaming tree. tree. So yeah, that, that was our post office adventure. Mm -hmm. And then, where did we go next? I think we got some food. <laughs> yes, we went to Mavic's. Corner Cafe. Corner Cafe, right. which, which was in town. We actually went there, I think because the museum kind of referred you there. Right. They said if you brought your ticket there, you got a free sample of their famous ice cream sundae, which they called the Dusty Miller. Mm -hmm. Which also relates back to the railroad history of the town. Right. I don't remember the story exactly, so I don't mess it up. Well, there was a guy whose name was Dusty Miller who came in all dusty from working, and he said he had a great idea for a type of ice cream. And so this is what he came up with, and since the guy's name was Dusty Miller, and because it's topped with malt powder that looks like dust, the owner named it the Dusty Miller. Yeah. So the ingredients for this thing are vanilla ice cream, marshmallow syrup, chocolate syrup, and malted milk powder, and a cherry on top. And the malted milk powder, like Hannah said, is supposed to represent the dust. Right. And pro tip, stir your Dusty <laughs> Miller. I just took a bite. And the powder was a lot. <laughs> But it was, you liked I it. I liked it a lot. And overall, it was, it was a good lunch. It was fairly inexpensive. Right. Um, and good food. Mm hmm Good home-style corner cafe type cooking. Yeah. So next, we just walked up and down Main Street, USA. Mm hmm A lot of the shops were closed, but it was still nice just to walk up and down and see the buildings that were recreated for Disney World and Disneyland mm -hmm. and how they differed slightly. So, But the inspiration was definitely there. Oh yeah, for sure. And then there was one building, um, I'll show the picture here, it was called Zercher's, not really sure what it was, I think it was just empty. Uh, but it was the, empty when we were there, Right. but I thought they said it was a jewelry store. Okay. And then the one Maybe. wall had a Coke advertisement on it, which I guess supposedly Walt would always come up from the railroad tracks and see this big coke sign when he was walking into town and this building, how, you, how it's shaped in the front, is what they used to inspire Casey's in Magic Kingdom and Disney World or the refreshment corner or the uh, Coca-Cola refreshment corner or Coke corner in Disneyland. So they told us that that's why it's coke because of the sign, so that's why, that's why coke is served in Disney World and Disneyland. And they said it was also kind of a mystery because the coke wall, the coke wall, mural was covered for a long time. Yeah. And until a building came down. I think there was a fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But a building that was covering the mural that had been built next to the other building and covering the mural fell down and then they saw the coke mural. Yeah. <laughs> and it made a lot of sense. So. Main Street was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. A lot of Disney influence with there. The uh, Mickey ears on the street on the signs. street signs. The street signs were very cute and were good for a cute photo op. Yes. Yeah. You could pose on Main Street. Yeah. With the Mickey ear signs. And we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and the theater, I don't think it was open, but the ticket booth, they had a stuffed goofy in there, which I thought yeah, that was kind of cool. That was very cute. So, yeah, that was Main Street USA.
Our next stop was to visit Walt Disney's childhood house. And this is a private residence, so you cannot go inside. But you can look at the house from the outside, mm -hmm. and there's a plaque for you to read with information about Disney's time in Marceline. So that was very cool. Yeah. And the house had been painted, definitely. Yeah, I don't think it used to be white. Right. And now it's red. In the museum, they had talked about how Walt and Ruth creatively painted on the house. Yes. So maybe the <laughs> red was to cover some of that because... Possibly. You know, but... And they did tell us that this house in the picture was... It had an addition since Walt Disney lived there. So the far end of the house in the picture is the addition that was put in by the current residents. So just the front half is what Walt lived in. And then our next stop was to go to the Walt Disney Barn and Dreaming Tree site. So that was very cool. And it was a bit of a hike yes. to get back there. Not anything terrible. Just off the road. Right, you had to walk through a little ways and you saw the original Dreaming Tree, Sight. which had, which has sadly fallen. Yes. But they have Son of Dreaming Tree, which is from the seeds of the original Dreaming Tree and was planted nearby. But the Dreaming Tree was where Walt would dream, hang out and dream, dream his dreams. Have his ideas, so. But if you go a little farther back past the Dreaming Trees, then you come across the barn. Which is a recreation of the original barn. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he had the original barn moved to California when he moved out there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. But this was made from the plans for that original barn. Right. And it was very cool. On the outside, it looks like a little barn. Mm -hmm. And then when you go inside, the entire barn, everything from floor to ceiling, is covered in signatures and notes to Walt Disney thanking him for the inspiration and yeah. everything that Disney has provided countless people all over the world. Yeah, and I think there were markers or pens available for you to use, but I think we brought our own pen. Right, I had a pen in my purse. But yeah, it's you're, you're welcome to sign anything in the barn, which was which I thought was really cool. So of course we signed it. Mm -hmm. We found a little spot. Yeah. And I think there might have been more spots available up in the rafters, but we weren't in shoes appropriate for climbing. <laughs> but the volunteers had joked in the museum that maybe you could lift me up. Yeah. And I kind of thought they were joking. They were not. No. They, the entire barn was covered with signatures. And some of the signatures, it was like, how did somebody get up there to sign it? Right. It was impressive. People had to just pull themselves up and climb and balance kind of on these cross beams. Yeah. But there were all sorts of notes. There was somebody who proposed. There was a sign that said, will you marry me? Yeah. I know there was a cast member. That badge. was probably my favorite part of it was that somebody, I think it was like a 50 year cast member from Disneyland, put their cast member name tag in the barn, which I thought was really cool. There were all sorts of notes, and of course we left ours thanking Disney because he was one of the things that brought us together. Yeah. So overall, I think it was a pretty good trip and worth the trip if you're a big Disney fan. Right. I kind of joked that this was our pilgrimage <laughs> to the Disney hometown site, and I agree. I think it's definitely worth the trip. I think it's probably... A day trip. Yeah, I depending don't... on where you're coming from. Right. So I don't know what hotels are in the area. We had quite a drive to get there, but... Right. Yeah, it was it was a nice little trip. So what was your favorite part? I loved the barn. It was just so cool, and it was just kind of breathtaking to walk in and see Yeah. this... Like, from the outside, it's a pretty unassuming little building. Yeah. But when you walk inside and open the door, it's just floor to ceiling. Thank yous. Exactly. Just so many thank yous. There were people who were just gushing about how he, Walt inspired them. And it was just, it was really moving to see how Walt and in turn Marceline had kind of 
touched so many people's lives. Yeah, it was very cool. I, I agree. My my favorite was I from the barn as well for the same reasons. Like, it it was kind of overwhelming to see all the thank yous, but it was it was very touching. And we read some of them on our way out the door, and it was it was very nice. Mm -hmm. Definitely worth the trip. Mm -hmm. So. If you've been to Marceline, let us know in the comments. Yeah. Or if you're planning to go to Marceline, we'd love to hear about that too. Yeah, and I'll link the uh, website for the museum if you're interested in visiting in the mm -hmm. description below. So, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. See you real soon.